As Disney's centennial celebration, which turned out to be quite the disappointment of the decade for Disney, disappointment of a decade so far at least, let's be constructive for a moment and make one small change to this movie that will make it work. Obviously, this rewrite must have the same general plot as the original movie. While concepts like the Starboy and Queen Amaya being evil are interesting, fans have certainly made their fair share of good content with both. That's not what I'm here for. I'm here to sort of just deconstruct and reconstruct the movie, not reshape it into something else completely. However, this doesn't mean that I can't use any deleted scenes, alternate scenes, or just cut characters. They're all fair game. This movie begins the same way. Magnifico is a man who lost everything, but he founded the Kingdom of Rosas. Anyone can be there for a better life, but at a given cost. Instead of willingly giving up their wishes to King Magnifico when they turn 18, Magnifico forces everyone to give up their wishes when they turn 18. And if you come there by boat, well, he forces you to give up your wish as your toll booth, I guess. As your toll fee. The central theme of Wish is that wishes are more than just your thoughts and desires. They are a part of who you are. As such, it is wrong for Magnifico to take them and commodify them as trinkets. And based off of what Sabino talks to Asha about in the deleted scene back when Asha lived in a hidden hamlet who didn't give up their wishes to Magnifico, this seems like it was the case. Magnifico and Amaya apparently ran Rosas as if they were a mafia family. Why did they cut this? So basically, I'm sort of bringing that element back. Basically, Magnifico is going to protection racket everyone in Rosas. This movie generally plays out the same way as the final product so far. Asha wants to become the Sorcerer's Apprentice in order to get her grandfather's wish. Magnifico seems reasonable at first, but then we get the big turning point, at all costs. There is no tiptoeing around this. At all costs in the final product was not written as a hero-villain duet. It was written as a love song. It is quite clear that they had the star in mind. It's a song about how couples want to protect each other. And while it does have strange rhymes like rhyming wind and in, it works as a love song between an awkward teenager and an alien star who doesn't understand the who man. But as a hero-villain duet, it fails. To remedy this, let's rewrite the song. I'm not a songwriter, but the general purpose of this song should be this. Asha is singing about how wishes are part of people's hearts and are precious to people. Magnifico, on the other hand, sings about how the wishes belong to him, that they are just objects that may prove useful to him one day. He's basically spelling out how he commodifies human hearts, and honestly, it helps him be a relevant villain for today because the human heart has become something to be bought and sold. I'm not talking about stories or actual organs, I'm talking about actual human misery. Tina Young once ran a TED talk about how college applications force kids to write about their darkest traumas for admissions in order to get into college. It's a cliche they see so many times, but hey, they expect it because I guess they want a good story. One of the quotes is, Your story has to be sad enough to gain sympathy, but not so sad that it makes you seem beyond help. Just critical enough to inspire change, but not so much that it actually criticizes systemic structures. Just honest enough to seem real, but not so unfiltered that it creates discomfort. Yep. Your misery is just a feel-good story for the admissions officer. Your memories are a filler for marketing. Woohoo. It's not just colleges who make money off of your misery. Entire Twitter accounts are dedicated to profiteering off of outrage. That's all I'm going to say about it on the matter. Going back to the actual subject, Asha does not get the job as the Sorcerer's Apprentice, but the old apprentice is still around. This is Fazino, Magnifico's apprentice, which they cut. Given that the star was a plushie by now, he probably was cut late in the development cycle. This is where we get Asha's I Want song. This wish will be altered a bit. Instead of Asha singing about wanting something more for us than this because that is vague nonsense, it will be about how wishes aren't something Magnifico can simply lock away in a box. These are people's hearts, and she wants to free them all. Then we get the arrival of the star. The I'm a Star song is the worst song in the movie, and I don't want it to be in this rewrite, so I am cutting it down and just reducing it to a montage of talking animals. Ash and Star play different roles compared to the film. The plan isn't the heist just yet. Rather, Fazino, Magnifico's apprentice, will be telling Asha about the contents of the Wishes Magnifico Horde. Magnifico senses a power greater than his own, which he's paranoid and he doesn't want that. And, of course, Asha and the star and Valentino will be going around in a montage granting the wishes of the Kingdom of Rosas. 
only the good wishes. They think through the implications fully so that Asha isn't depicted as some nutcase who wants to grant all the evil wishes as well. Asha, Valentino, and the star going around and granting wishes really helps the fact that Magnifico's original defeat didn't have the weight it should have had, because the Kingdom of Rosas really didn't have much personality in order to justify everyone uniting and making it feel like a triumphant moment. Magnifico is clearly threatened by his collection of wishes disappearing, because as Asha grants each wish, they simply start disappearing from his grasp. He can't control them any longer. And he also discovers Fazino was the one leaking the information. After jailing his former apprentice, he goes on to confront Asha in her home. Magnifico heard rumors of Asha and the wish-granting star and practicing magic without authorization. He does not destroy wishes in this scene, not yet. Instead, Asha manages to get away, with a star's help. Our villain song will be Magnifico making the staff, not This is the Thanks I Get. This is where we see Magnifico destroy the wishes in order to make the staff. Asha's mother faints from her wishes being destroyed. However, Sabina's wishes destruction ends up killing him because of his advanced age. The third wish to be destroyed is Fazino's wish because Fazino is a traitor to Magnifico, so, well, why shouldn't he treat the traitor to that kind of torment? Magnifico thinks killing an old man because his granddaughter wronged Magnifico is too far. Thus, Amaya's choice to join Asha and the Seven Dolts makes a lot more sense, because couples tend to draw the line at, you know, murder. Amaya tells them that they need to free the wishes and prevent more people from getting hurt. She apologizes to Asha since Sabino is now dead because of Magnifico's wish shattering. And of course, well, he was an old man already. Asha is very broken up about this, but there's no time to mourn. Amaya tells them how to sneak into the castle, which they do. This is where they encounter Fazino. He is tossed in the dungeon for his treachery, and since his wish is destroyed, he is too weak and depressed to even move, even though the star does eventually help fill the void in his heart. Then they head to the tower to free the wishes. Magnifico, however, knows that they're there and wants to stop them. Instead of distracting Magnifico with a chase sequence, we instead get a Fantasia homage after the star gives Asha a bit of its power in the wand. Asha will duel Magnifico, and it is clear she has no idea what she's doing. First, she turns one of the animals into a dinosaur to fight Magnifico as a homage to Rite of Spring from Fantasia, and Magnifico sends out his own monster against it. Asha then brings the brooms to life, who attack Magnifico with buckets of water, and Magnifico splinters them quite easily. However, much like how Mickey slashed the brooms with that axe and failed to destroy them, Magnifico now has to deal with even more brooms arising from the splinters and flooding the tower. Magnifico then takes on a Chernabog-like role, summoning spirits to attack Asha, and then using the fires of hell itself to boil away the water and burn the brooms to a crisp. Asha then summons mythological creatures of her own as a homage to Pastoral Symphony, but it's pretty clear that she is outmatched. Because, you know, Magnifico now has a Chernabog-like presence, although not appearance, and will not be stopped so easily. While six of the seven dolts are trying to free the wishes, Amaya, Dahlia, and Fazino go through the magic. Dahlia thinks they can't stop Magnifico because forbidden magic is forbidden magic. Amaya might know her husband is a murderer, but she doesn't want to actually kill him. Fazino, however, suggests trapping him, but what will be powerful enough and strong enough to actually trap Magnifico now? Magnifico has defeated Asha, captures the Wishes of Rosas, and now has bound everyone. Magnifico goes full genie Jafar, boasting about how the cosmos is for him to control and the hearts of everyone will not only sustain him now, but for all eternity. This is a reference to how Magnifico was going to hulk out. However, much like how Chernabog was defeated by the chanting of monks during matins in the original Night on Bald Mountain, the singing of the people who reprised the whole This Wish, and the now depowered staff Magnifico dropped while boasting, is used to seal him for good. Magnifico is locked away, hopefully he can be redeemed, and the ending can stay just about the same. And now we have come to the end of this rewrite. Please consider liking, subscribing, and tipping the channel on Kofi. This is Cyril signing off.